Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. The little Cobra crossbow pistol is one of the most popular home defense anti-zombie weapons ever because it's very affordable and still effective against zombies as uh, my friends from Zombie Go Boom found out a while ago. You can see the link to their video down below. But in any case, it fires these affordable li little arrows and cocking is also fairly easy because you have this lever that you can simply, you know, use to cock it back and then you load the arrow like this. And it has a self-engaging safety and then you can use it to shoot. Not bad, quite powerful, but of course it has drawbacks. The main drawback is the long reloading time. I mean, you have to do all this and fumble. I mean, how is that going to work in a zombie apocalypse? It's a no-go. Therefore, a while ago, I um, invented a magazine for it, and it works quite well. This is my modified one. I really tricked out. Uh, you've seen this before, so I'll briefly explain it anyway. As you see, it has this homemade wooden magazine for up to 10 of these little arrows. And it's mounted on top of the original frame, so therefore most of the, uh, of the crossbow pistol is still intact. I attached this inexpensive little, you know, soft air hand front handle and also a red dot sight. I removed the self-engaging safety because that's too slow. And it fires quite effectively. You still have to cock it back and fire. But then you're way quicker than with the regular one like this. I'm really happy with it, but it does have some drawbacks. The biggest drawback is that for repeating you have to uh, take your hand off the pistol grip in order to cock this whole thing and then you have to get it back and to be ready to fire. That's a disadvantage and I think a normal pump action would be far more efficient. But this cannot be done to the original frame. So I have to build a weapon from scratch. So I drew up this plane. And as you see, it's a crossbow pistol, about the same size, and is of course shooting the same arrows. But it has a pump action front handle that you can use to repeat the action. Um, and of course you, need, you don't need the original crossbow pistol anymore, but some parts of it. Specifically, you need the fiberglass bow part, which you can get as a spare part, but sometimes it's even cheaper to buy the whole thing and then harvest these parts from it. But anyway, you also need the protective caps and of course you need the string. And this really makes a formidable little bow in itself. It says it has 80 LB. I don't think so. I think it's more like 50 pounds or so, but it's still powerful. And of course you need these arrows. Make sure you get these one part uh, pieces. There is one with a two part, with a split part in the middle, but those fall apart in no time and I recommend this model here. It's a little more expensive, but still very affordable. Other than that, this whole thing is made from plywood. Actually, I bought two large pieces. One has to be as thick as the arrow itself, or a little thicker. This is a six millimeter board. Actually, it turns out it's more like seven millimeters. And this is necessary because if it's too thin, then the whole me mechanism will jam. And then you need a thinner piece. This is a four millimeter piece, very thin and inexpensive for the side plates. A lot of people will now ask, yeah, why not using rubber? Why using the original bow? Well, the answer is because if you would use rubber, then you would have to make the whole weapon a lot longer since rubber need to be pretensed as well. And also I think it's just the performance of this fiberglass is really, really good in a compact size. So I like it a lot. Also, it's not depending on the temperature. Right now it's very cold outside. It's like minus three or something uh, centigrade. <laughs> but um, this means that rubber would no longer work really well. Therefore, a fiberglass version is more reliable and also more compact in size. As you see, this is the side plate and the other parts, actually, we have a total of um, five layers of wood. 
um, will now have to be sawn out and then glued together in the next step. Here are all the parts. As you see two outer thinner parts and then the inner parts and the center piece with the trigger. And now we have to glue it all together of course in the right order. Now we see one side completely mounted and you see the trigger is in place and you also see that I attached a little bit of a rubber band here and I'll explain you what that is for. But first of all see that the little bolt fits exactly down here and you can see that there is space for the fletching. And then you see that this line here, this inner part is a little bit lower so that the arrow can rest here. And as you see, it cannot fall through, but it can glide forwards, just like this, and shoot out. And this here is to prevent that the uh, arrow can actually be shifted inside of the housing, let me show this from this side, for the trigger. So this cannot, if it falls in like this, it cannot jam the action here, because it's stopped by the rubber lip and also because the wood is a little bit more tight here. But this is the precision part. If you do this wrong, the action will not work. Now everything is glued together. As you see, I already filed flush the outer parts. Still have not done any rounding. Uh, it is very important to really sand the lower part of this little slot here, because that is where the string is gonna run. And um, the less friction, the longer the string will last. Same goes for the trigger sear. This is also going to be in contact with the string and therefore it is absolutely necessary that this is super smooth. At this point it is very important that the arrow runs very freely in the slot here without any jamming. If there is jamming, take the file and widen it a little bit until it's absolutely perfect. Here you can see how nicely the bolt runs in the chamber and if I push it, it will glide out very easily and then you can put it in again. Now we have to drill a hole, uh, ideally like six millimeters or so, through here, because that is how we're gonna fix uh, the bow. And for that we just need a short screw and a proper nut, and that is gonna press down on the bow. Okay, now we've attached the bow. It's actually fairly solid and um, now basically the weapon is ready to fire. Cocking, of course, we still have no pump action handle, but it's not hard to simply draw it back and wait until it engages. Now we can slide in an arrow, this, as you see it's nicely in place. And we already made the little sled part that later on will push down on our ammo. Currently we have no attachment for it, but we just do it manually to see if the weapon is shooting. First time, shot. Exciting. Ha! It works! <laughs> A shooting weapon. That sled, of, of course, also needs to run very, very smoothly down the entire magazine slot. So it needs to be a little bit thinner than the slot itself. Just make it from the same board, but then you take a file and file it down a bit. Next, we have to saw out the small parts that we're going to glue to the sides so they hold the rubber bands. And it is far easier to work on those shapes as long as they're still attached to the board. Of course, there are two different types. One is made in a way that the rubber clicks in so that it's, the rubber bands won't fall off, like this. And the other ones are just hooked so that you can easily slip the rubber band over it. Like this, see, it's firmly in place. And when you're absolutely happy with the shape, then you sew out the individual parts. Okay, here are our four parts. Now we glue the little pieces in place. 
So, now the magazine slider is in place and as you see the rubber bands are snapped in place nicely here and I can simply put them over the notches here and it's pressing down on the arrows in the magazine there's now like seven or so in and as you see there is room for a few more anyway so if I just cock it because I don't have the pump uh, now but if I cock it back automatically uh, one arrow falls in place and I can shoot like that and then I can cock this thing again and fire it again. As you see it works like a charm. <laughs> now the pump action part. So as you see the handle fits nicely over this and you could put through the screws, one and two, and it needs to be running very freely to the slot. And of course it has to be put behind it here, so that it pushes the string. So this whole pump handle slash sled is in place. And it's of course not rounded, so it's not yet comfortable, but it already works like a charm. Bang! <laughs> exactly the way I wanted it to be. And now it is time for some serious rounding, since this is totally edgy at this point. So it is now basically finished. It's rounded, it's smooth, it's fully functional. <laughs> now of course I could give it some kind of spray paint or uh, could also use, I don't know, camouflage. But I think I'll just oil it because then you can still see it's made from wood. Kind of appealing to me. Alright, now it is pretty much finished. The only thing that is lacking is a siding system. I've ordered a red dot and hopefully it will arrive tomorrow and then we'll install it. And then the weapon is ready for the comparison with the original Cobra. Okay, so my red dot sight has arrived. I used the CV Life product, bought it on Amazon. I really like it because I've used it before for the original crossbow Cobra pistol mod. And as you see, it has a protective cover and a uh, very nice glass. Um, and uh, it's very versatile. It has either green or red sightings. Let me see if you can see this through here. Okay. <laughs> right on my nose. <laughs> and But you can also change the shape of this. So I can go for all different kinds of shapes here. And again... I can switch it to red color if I want to. You could get this for the either for the 22 mm Picatinny rail system or for the 11 mm dovetail system. And I also inexpensively bought one of these rails and actually this comes in 11 mm on one side and 22 mm on the other side. So it's really easy to use this and we'll simply mount it to the reserved space on the crossbow pistol. Like this.
All right, now it is done. I think it gives it a cool look, this piece of high-tech on top of this low-tech gun. <laughs> Here you can see the three different models in comparison. First the unmodified original Cobra, then the tricked out Cobra with the magazine for 10 arrows and also the forehandle, and then our homemade one made almost entirely from wood. I think it is really small, much smaller than the two other versions because of the long lever. In terms of weight, let's find out. Original one, 910 grams. Tricked out one, 150, uh, 52 grams. And the wooden piece, uh, 890 grams. So it's the lightest of all three. I like that a lot because this feels like nothing at all at the end of your outstretched arm. Of course, the three models use the same prod and string, therefore power and accuracy is about the same. But what about the speed? So we'll fire three bolts from each model and see which one is the fastest. Okay. It's a bit cold, therefore dexterity isn't great, but okay, that's it. All right, now the modified one. That was quick. Okay, last not least, the homemade one. I think the uh, black one was a little bit faster, but that is a good weapon, for sure. As you see, penetration into the plywood was about the same for all of the arrows. Alright, let's test the accuracy of the 12 meter distance, which is about the longest that is practical. Probably can go up to 20 meters, but uh, don't forget that this has no magnification, so it's limited. Alright. Let's go for one more. Okay. That wasn't too bad. I think it's an acceptable group. So, all in all, I think it is a really good weapon. I like it a lot, but of course, it's not an easy build. I added some blueprints. Uh, you can find the link down below if you really want to try it, but it's not easy to do. You need some experiences in woodworking. Also, it's kind of hard to cock. I mean, this is not for the weak of arm. You really have to have some power to cock it back. I think probably for a majority of users, I would have to have like a little, uh, uh, rack and pinion or something, you know, that gives us a transmission of 1 to 2 or maybe even 1 to 3. But, in any case, I hope you liked it, because I do. <laughs> Thanks and bye bye. <laughs> As a little bonus, so many people wanted to see what happens when I use my 1000 joule air gun and shoot against the car door. And for that I reactivated my steel tipped all steel arrow and that's actually a center punch so it's hardened steel that should have uh, no problem with the car door <laughs> all right let's see and <laughs> where did that go
Okay, you can see the fletching that was stripped off. I think it went into here, through the plastic. Yes, and that is an exit hole. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You can clearly see it crash through the metal. And flew on. And we'll probably find it somewhere here. There it is. It almost crashed through the entire shed wall here. See, it's poking out right here. Wow. Okay, it destroyed this board as well. And there is our arrow. <laughs> of course, it is in need of new fletching. But other than that, a few scratches, but fully intact. I think the weapon is in need of a new stock. See the recoil slowly broke the old board apart. So some repairing before I do record tests again in the summer. But that gives me like five, six months of time.